Is Isa is on. Awesome, awesome. Yes, this is going to be a huge blessing for people and to learn about this and to hear about this. So first of all, let me start again by introducing you. Dr. Jeff Fan and we met a couple of months ago. You live here in Arizona, thank goodness. Um, you're a neuroscientist and uh, you you're an author. Um, I've seen you in a movie um, called um, Intuition. Um, you are a published study that you have that's being peer reviewed right now and, and should be on PubMed. Um, and you do brain mapping. So explain to us, I had never heard of brain mapping before. So explain to my friends and, and our Facebook friends out there, what is brain mapping? Yeah, I probably hear that question. Uh, that's the first question out of people's mouths is what is brain mapping? Well, we start with an electroencephalogram and uh, we put a cap on your head and measure 20 locations. Uh, put this gel down in the uh, cap so that it makes contact with the scalp and then extracts the, uh, the uh, different frequencies and we bring it up on a screen. So those are the squiggly lines that you usually see. And then we'll take that information and we'll convert it to a quantitative EEG. And the quantitative EEG is what we typically call a brain map. And that way we can see the patterns in the brain or things like that that uh, uh, allow for uh, things like anxiety or depression or ADD or ADHD and uh, all the uh, different uh, situations come with a signature. Mm -hmm. So when you do the brain mapping and you identify, so let's take someone with ADD, right? So you identify what's going on in the brain. And then, so what do you do from there with your, with your programs? How, wh what can you do with that? Yeah, we, uh, for the last 23 years, have been doing uh, neurofeedback. So I'll build a protocol for the individual, which is fairly complicated. We won't get into that here. Uh, but uh, telling the brain to do something or not do something. So there's a part of the brain called the nucleus cumin that uh, that's how we learn everything. So they might be watching a video, for example, and this protocol will tell them to increase this frequency or decrease that frequency. I can put in like uh, uh, 250,000 uh, variables if I want, but it's usually like 16 different things that we're having the brain do because the brain's a, a, a pretty dynamic instrument. It, um, <clears throat> in, in our conscious our thinking part of the brain the cortex up there uh, we will typically uh, process at about 40 bits per second now the subconscious where most of this stuff happens and the nucleus accumens is, is basically telling us what to do is uh, processing at 40 million bits per second so we don't have to be consciously aware of uh, as an example uh, a person might be uh, watching a video and it's uh, attached to this protocol. And uh, by doing whatever we've asked again and again and again, it causes new dendrites to form, new neural pathways to grow. And we're literally rewiring the brain. And that's what brain training is all about, is just picking a point. And I can see this in three dimension while they're actually training. Wow, that is so fascinating. Um, and so you've been doing this for many, many years. And you have um, um, used, you know, many different techniques. Um, but recently, you were introduced to um, NRF2 activation. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was introduced to that, and it just literally changed my world, you know, Why? by understanding the NRF. Well, you know, when I started looking at the research, actually, uh, the, the gal that enrolled me in uh, Life Vantage, we were doing a brain map on her just for the fun of it, just so she could see what we do. And she saw a pamphlet sitting on the table there in my office and uh, wanted, uh, she said, let me introduce you to something. This pamphlet was about aging and, and dealing with uh, cell inflammation and things. And so she... Uh, said, let me send you some stuff. She so she started texting me. And one after another after another, got, got a whole bunch of them. So I was paying quite a bit of attention to them. 
And it, it allowed me to get on PubMed and start looking at the depth of research that was there. And through that research, I, I really uh, realized that uh, we're looking at real science, very deep science and very uh, uh, strong science. And so that captured my attention and decided that, um, you know, what, what kind of a doctor would I be if I wasn't telling other people about this? Uh, because it, it is truly a medical breakthrough. So being the scientist that I am, I decided that I would um, put this to the test with some of my own people uh, that I'm working with. So uh, started uh, running some tests and different variables to see what would happen. And um, so we had basically like a, a, a 15 year old male, put him on NRF1, NRF2, uh, and uh, some Axio, because uh, he had uh, been diagnosed by uh, another doctor with having inattentive ADD. So he couldn't focus or concentrate. And uh, so I wanted to see, you know, would this uh, be of any kind of benefit for him? So when he took it, uh, we had a brain map that we did before, and so like in October uh, of uh, this year, we did a brain map on him because he'd done about 18 sessions of neurofeedback, and uh, then the holidays came, and, you know, they had company in from out of town, and there was a little bit of time there where he didn't do a lot of training, and after the holidays, we put him on this NRF1, NRF2, and the Axio, and then decided uh, about 12 days later to um, do another brain map and see what had occurred. And that's where it got really unusual for me. It was almost like walking into the twilight zone, I think, uh, because I, I was able to see, if you haven't seen the video that we did before, I would encourage you to go find that and, uh, and take a look at it. Or you can put it in the comments if you want to see the video that we did and, and, and in that video, uh, Dr. Fannin shows the brain map and it, the before and after of the picture. So if you want that, put it in the comments. Just say, send me the video and we'll get it out to you. Yeah. The, uh, so once I saw that, it, it, uh, I couldn't explain it, you know, because in 23 years of practicing, I had never seen anything that would change that quickly. And I tried to... Uh, account for it by, you know, was there something wrong with the cap? Was there something wrong with the computer? Was there something wrong with the data? And everything checked out. And so I, I really didn't have an explanation. And I started thinking back in some of my training and experience and uh, looking at a quantum physics model. So when you consider how the body reacts and uh, deals with um, sending energy and information down at the cellular level, we have 600 million billion cells and they have to be what's called dynamic. And by dynamic, I mean, there has to be a greater elevation of uh, coherence. If they're not coherent, then uh, the cell or the organ is dead. So the, the dynamics of that has to be uh, that there is some coherence. When I started looking at it from a coherence standpoint, then I was able to see, okay, this is happening down at the molecular level below what we even, uh, our, our, our knowledge can understand. Most people don't understand it, uh, but it made perfect sense to me why these changes in energy would happen at that cellular level. And so then we would see the, the changes in the brain map. And uh, that made sense to me. So uh, I had uh, another fellow, uh, a good friend of mine that we, when uh, we were taking Tai Chi and Qigong classes, uh, got to be friends and uh, he uh, uh, is suffering from prostate cancer. So we did some tests on him and put him on the NRF1, NRF2, uh, kept the Axio out, just trying to isolate some variables here to see how that would affect him. And we found uh, basically the same thing when we looked at the energy flow in the body and, and uh, 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 interview that I did the other day with Becky Taylor, we showed what some of that stuff looks like. And uh, 
uh, we can get that uh, to you if you write in the comments that you're interested in seeing that. Uh, we can put that out there for you. But uh, uh, it didn't really uh, address his prostate cancer because that's uh, a, a different uh, part of the equation here. But it did uh, make a change in his chakra alignment, in his energy field, and more importantly, the stressors, how he was uh, dealing with the stress. Uh, when we consider oxidative stress, which is at the base of all of this, oxidative stress comes from that environment uh, that we live in. You know, the, the food that we eat, the uh, pollution in the air, all of the kinds of things that enter into the uh, element of creating the uh, free radicals that go on and begin to damage our cells, it becomes uh, a, a real key element in this whole thing. Now, uh, a few years ago, back in 2015, I did a study on energy healing with 60 known energy healers. And part of the uh, study, we were looking at the mitochondria uh, of the cells. So the mitochondria and the microtubule uh, in relationship to that is what creates the biophotonic energy that we, um, we have in our body. So that was kind of a link for me to go back and look at the, uh, uh, what's happening with the NRF1, NRF2, and the mitochondria of our cells and how they're communicating. So it's uh, really um, a very, very strong link and uh, watching how it changes the energy in the body and getting down to uh, coherence. You know, how is the body transmitting energy and information in those 600 million billion cells? So we essentially have uh, three electromagnetic centers that are very important in our body. One is the electromagnetic centers around our chakras. And if you're not familiar with that, you, you can look that up on the internet. But uh, the second uh, electromagnetic center is around the heart. And the third one is the electromagnetic center around the brain. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that the electromagnetic center around the heart is 60 times greater than the electromagnetic center around the brain. So there are more signals going from the heart to the brain than the brain to the heart. And it's traveling up that sympathetic nervous system. And, uh, and so when oxidative stress is um, being diminished, then we get more of these stressors that are uh, moving up that uh, trigemic nerve to uh, uh, affect the brain and the brain then trying to communicate back down. But there's a lack of balance between the uh, sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So uh, I'm not trying to give you a whole lesson in uh, physical anatomy here, but it, it does relate back to the story. So uh, in, in um, dealing with this particular individual, and we could see that the coherence, uh, once we improve the coherence, and we have a, a measure that uh, he would clip on his ear, and we could measure this over like 11 day period and, and see his uh, coherence grow. And then when we got to looking at his activated, uh, activated coefficient, which means how is he handling the daily stressors, uh, it got much better. He was down in the, what we call the pink area, uh, in a um, uh, protective mode and because of all of the things that he was dealing with. But after 11 days of taking the NRF1 and NRF2, we found that he was uh, actually uh, up in the green zone because uh, he was handling daily stressors he got back to walking uh, two miles a day and going to the gym three days a week. And so uh, even though his physical energy was a little bit higher, it's because he hadn't been doing any physical activity, but now he was. So uh, that was pretty amazing to me to look at what's, what's at the basis of all of this stuff? How is it functioning in our body? And it really goes right back to that mitochondria, you know, and the repair of the mitochondria, you know, with the NRF1. Mm -hmm. so. so when you talked about the 15 year old, um, not only did you see the improvement on the second brain map you did after 
he had activated that NRF2 pathway and the NRF1 pathway. Um, and just so people understand, these are pathways in your body that are activated. And um, I know you're drinking your Axio, yay. <laughs> um, but NRF2, for example, when you activate that pathway, it's a messenger. It goes into your body, it finds a problem, then it goes back to the cell and it communicates with the cell and it tells the cell, make more of these enzymes, make less of this, make more inflammation, make less inflammation. So it's correcting the gene expression. The NRF1 pathway tells the body to repair the mitochondria and make more, more mitochondria. So I just want to clarify that we're not saying that any of this is to treat, cure, prevent any disease, right? The child still has ADD. But what physically um, have they seen as a difference? You know, I know you mentioned the teachers. So if you can explain that part of it, what was happening before he was he activated, you know, the NRF2 and the NRF1 pathway? Yeah, the parents were getting uh, two and three calls a day from the school about uh, his uh, behavior. He's uh, using inappropriate language. He's not bringing in his homework. You know, the very typical things that we will see with ADD and ADHD uh, is what was occurring. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the school didn't know that we were actually going to do this uh, little mini study, if you will. And um, so after being on it for a while, um, the mom showed me a uh, report from the teacher, one of the teachers that said, wow, what a turnaround, you know, he's coming in, he's bringing in his homework, he's not talking with inappropriate language, you know, uh, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, uh, and the parents were seeing it as well, you know, that, that he was uh, 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 more uh, susceptible to family things and not arguing as much. And um, uh, he's really a very good kid and uh, wants very much to uh, improve. But with a condition like this, it, it takes a while for the gaps in their learning and their training and their behaviors to catch up. So even though his brain might be functioning better and he can do better, and in one of the trainings, I kind of uh, uh, got down uh, ear level with him and I said, uh, so tell me, how do you think this is helping you? And he said, I, th I think I'm uh, focusing a lot better in class now. And uh, one interesting thing is a, a little side story here is uh, he went out with some friends and they went to a movie and he left his bag where he had his NRF1 and NRF2 and his Axio in the bag and didn't get back to it. And they took him home. And so he was without it for about a week uh, before they uh, got it back to him. But um, he started to feel a difference, you know, in, and he wasn't focusing as well and things weren't going as well for him. And, and then once he got back on it, then, uh, then he was doing much better. So we, we still have a struggle in helping him get his uh, grades up to where they need to be because uh, that's usually what happens when their brain starts performing better and focusing and concentrating. They still have gaps in their learning. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's only been uh, a month now. So, you know, the, the right. longer he's yeah. on it, you know, the better. I mean, I remember I've been on, um, you know, I've been activating my NRF2 pathway for almost nine years now. And I remember the first month I got on, I and we didn't even have, you know, the brain drink, Axio at the time, it was just the NRF2 activator. But I remember my brain literally just a focus and a clarity. And, you know, uh, I just, you know, I didn't realize as you get older, you kind of lose a little bit of that focus and that clarity and your brain just isn't as crisp, right? And then all of a sudden, it was like a light bulb went off. Like I was like, my brain was just tracking so much and I could do multiple things and I knew where everything was going on. And it was just like my brain was unlocked. It was an amazing feeling. And, you know, I, over the years, I think, you know, with the NRF1 coming along and then the brain drink, you know, it's just this clarity and focus. And I, and I know before I go work out, if I need that extra boost of energy um, that I, you know, I, I take my Axio and then I go and I just, 
have so much more endurance. I just feel so much better in, in my brain in that clarity. Um, it's funny for um, uh, even hangovers, my, uh, my, uh, hello, <laughs> Texas is calling you. They're, they want to talk to you. Texas Look at that. Calling. You're being, people want to talk to you. <laughs> um, so right. my, uh, so. so I'm going to, I'm going to tell on my 21 year old college son, he's like, like we were talking about it and and i know that there's um like mobile vans that you can go get ivs after you know hanging you know drinking or you know partying go get ivs and what they're putting is antioxidants into your body to help you heal from the hangover so activating your nrf2 has your tells your body to make its own antioxidant enzymes which are much more potent um, and my, so my 20 year old said, mom, I never had a hangover. Like my friends get hangovers, but I never have a hangover. Of course not. Right. He's activating NRF2, NRF1, taking his Axio. And in the morning, I will tell you, if you do have a night, they have a little bit extra wine. And we had this conversation the other day, right? Yeah, you take that yeah. Axio and within <laughs> 20 minutes, the headache is gone, the hangover is gone and you feel amazing. So it's Saturday, right? So anybody going to go party out, um, par party yeah, take tonight, your axial with you. take your axial. Yeah. Take, yeah. Take one in the morning. And when you get up and you just kind of feel amazing. So it, it's incredible what that's doing, um, on a cellular, you know, what I love is, so I, you know, I, I, I have thousands and thousands of people, you know, activating it on these products and, um, we hear these stories, but now we have the scientific proof looking at the brain map before and after, and I'll post some of the pictures in this thread, but seeing that before and after and what you see in the brain. So we know that it is doing what it's, you know, it says it does in the brain. And, and that's awesome. The best part is, you know, hearing the stories where the teacher doesn't know anything what's going on, but she's already seen the difference. And we hear that over and over and over again, you know, they're focusing better, they're concentrating, um, their mood is better. Like I even think for depression, you know, being happier in a better mood. I know when I'm moody and I'm kind of feeling a little down, I have an axio and I just, my whole like brain just brightens up. You know, it's not just the energy, it's the, you know, um, you know, it just, I feel happier. I feel, you know, on cloud yeah. nine kind, kind of. Me too. It's much easier, you know, you bring that up and I think maybe someday I'll do a study on this, that 80% uh, of our thoughts are negative every day, 80%. Wow. And it's about controlling some of those. Now, the other factor is that uh, the following day, the 95% of your thoughts are the same thoughts that you thought yesterday. So let's take this back to the Axio here. And uh, so you wake up and you're activating your brain, you're opening it up, you're, you've taken your Axio, and now you're activating, <coughs> excuse me, left prefrontal cortex up here, and that's causing more positive thoughts. And so you know, my hypothesis is that the Axio is actually causing uh, more activation in the left prefrontal cortex because I feel better. You know, I start having more positive thoughts. It's easier to control the negative thoughts, push those out and be bringing more thoughts. Because if you hold a thought for 17 seconds and another thought that is vibrating just like that thought is going to come in and you're going to uh, gather more and more and more of those positive thoughts. But if we spend most of our time thinking about those negative thoughts, that's what's going to come in, and it lowers our point of attraction. So a little law of attraction lesson there. Oh, we're going to have another live on law of attraction because I cannot <laughs> wait to hear. I love law of attraction. My husband always teases me about it. Even last night, we were going to dinner with my godson, and we were looking for a parking space and oh man, I was manifesting that parking space. I was seeing us finding that close parking space and, yeah. um, and sure enough, <laughs> we got that parking space. So 
Um, I totally believe in the law of attraction and that your thoughts, you attract what you think of. So if you are a negative, you're going to attract negative things. It's, it's just, it's just the way it goes. And I don't even know the science behind it or why, but we will definitely have to have another live on just about that because I think people will be thrilled to learn about that, to learn more about that, how they can change those thoughts, how they can, you know, be more positive and not be, you know, in the last couple of weeks, there has been, um, this brings tears to my eyes, there has been f several kids that have gone to school with my kids that have committed suicide. And I'm heartbroken over this. Like, I, I, I can't even talk about it. Like, what is going on? Like, what is going on with these kids? So I think um, that would be a great, uh, another topic for us to talk about. I mean, we have to do something to, to help these kids that are out there. And what is going on? Why are they, there's, there's so much depression out there. And like, we know that these, you know, this nerf to activation and, and, and all of this would help, but also the thoughts you put in, right? Like we all get scary talk thoughts we all get negative thoughts but it's fighting that constantly and, and shifting that over um that yeah. so and, and a lot of people don't even understand that there is this thing called the receptive zone how do i get in the receptive zone when i have all these negative thoughts how do i how do i switch it over and a lot of people have no clue how to do that so in our next conversation we'll talk about that and throw a, a few little tidbits out and get your listeners to uh, join in with that. So, yeah. So, yeah, let's wrap it up here. So if anyone, you know, wants to know more about what is this NRF2 activation, NRF1 activation, you know, drop us comments uh, down here. And, you know, if you're a friend of Dr. Fan and he'll see these comments also, this is on his page and he can send you information. I mean, ABC investigative report actually came in and investigated Um the you know the this nrf2 activation and what is it is it even real does it you know can it, it it's another tool to help us get healthier right so if you want more information on it please you know put a comment on that that you want more information and we'll um absolutely send you more information and um do you want to wrap it up with anything um, i'll turn it over to you any your last thoughts on this nrf2 and nrf1 and what it can do in our bodies and you know i guess why should people be Think about it. Why should people want to activate their NRF1 pathway and their NRF2 pathway? Well, it, it's incredible to me uh, to see this medical breakthrough. I don't know how to put it any other way. It's truly a medical breakthrough and why people wouldn't want to uh, put this in their body. And I, I mean, I feel great as a result of it. I know I have a little bit of a cold uh, 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 so I'm getting getting rid of that, but I doubled up on my Axio, and and uh, that seemed to cut it down real quick, you know. So uh, in a matter of uh, two or three days, uh, it really helped me. But I, I can't imagine why anybody wouldn't want to age slower or repair the mitochondria uh, in their cells and uh, fight the free radicals and deal with aging. These are all uh, areas that... Uh, most people are concerned with. And I think the, it's time for a lot of people to take a very serious look at this and say, this is real science, it's real stuff, and it does work. So Maria, thank you for having me on today and uh, look forward thank to doing more you. with you. Thank you, thank you, that was amazing. And yes, we need to talk about intuition and law of attraction and all of that, I mean, you have so sure. much knowledge that um, I am so blessed to, uh, you know, call you my friend um, and um, to be on this journey with, with you. So thank you so much for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And please, any comments down there, um, send, uh, send Dr. Jeff um, Fannin some love. And we appreciate your time and your knowledge and everything. So thank you.